As we enter the new year, I know myself and many others are knees deep in the mourning period of the previous HHN, so I thought, hey, it's a new year, it's January, it is the perfect time to begin talking about what could be coming for HHN 33, make the next nine months a little more bearable. And if you've been tuned into the channel since last year, I made a video last year all about what IPs I think could come to the event. This is that video for this year, but I also want to throw in some original ideas as well. I have 10 concepts here for possible haunted houses, scare zones, or whatever to be coming to Halloween Horror Nights 33, and I want to share them with you all. Now, just a forewarning, this is literally just mindless predictions. We have no information about Halloween Horror Nights 33. I don't know anything, so just take these with a grain of salt, as these are totally wild card predictions, and this is the fun period before anything's really concrete, before we really know anything, where really everything's on the table. So when it comes to IPs for this year, there's one pretty obvious obvious choice that I'm just going to talk about now. I'm just going to get it out of the way uh, because everyone else is going to talk about it, and that is Five Nights at Freddy's. Not only was this the highest grossing horror film of 2023, it is the highest grossing Blumhouse film ever. And if you know Halloween Horror Nights, both in Orlando and Hollywood, you know that they have a pretty close relationship with Blumhouse. Blumhouse is a universal company. Not only is the ease of access of this IP something that should really lock it in for HHN 33, but also it has a distinct look has pretty distinct characters, stuff that could be really great for merchandising or other event offerings. And considering we just got Stranger Things and The Last of Us, two major heavy hitter IPs for the event last year, I think Five Nights at Freddy's will be that big one they're going to have for this year. Uh, whether they do the movie or the game, which happens to be celebrating its 10th anniversary. Regardless, I think Five Nights at Freddy's is locked in. I think that one is absolutely going to happen. Likely meter on this one, I'm putting a 5 out of 5. Now, the next few IPs are going to be ones actually talked about in my last video about this last year, but they might be a little more likely for this year because of new factors, or they're just IPs I want to talk about because I just really hope they come to the event. The first one on the list is going to be Universal Monsters. This one is pretty much a staple at HHN at this point. They are super popular. They are pretty well made. They are great new takes on these classic characters that is just priming us for what's going to be coming at Epic Universe, and I think they're just a solid IP to have on the lineup, something that Universal owns, something that is so important to their studio that they want to continue having a presence at Halloween Horror Nights. So, which Universal Monster will it be this time around? I guessed Phantom of the Opera last year, and that was the one that was done last year, but the other one I guessed last year, and the one I'm really going to put forward this year, is Creature from the Black Lagoon. I think Gilman is one of the most recognizable Universal Monsters. They had a pretty memorable moment with him in the 2019 Monsters Collab House, and they really nailed the jungle theme with the Jungle of Doom scare zone they had last year. So I think if they were to dedicate that whole concept to a haunted house, it could be a great addition to the Universal Monsters lineup. I think we do need to start going a little smaller with the monsters, um, because if you just keep going bigger, I think it kind of dulls some of the appearances of some of the monsters. So my pick here is a solo creature from the Black Lagoon, house, I think, because it's the only one they really haven't done yet, and it's such a popular character, I think this one is also pretty likely. I'm also putting this one at a 5 out of 5 on the likely meter. Now, talking about big horror movies coming in 2024, and sort of big horror characters that have really appeared in the public consciousness over the past couple years, we have to talk about Art the Clown and Terrifier. The hype that Terrifier 3 has gotten with just the short little teaser that we've gotten has been insane, and it seems like Damian Leone, the director of the Terrifier films talks about wanting to work with Halloween Horror Nights to bring Art the Clown to the event. So that's really the reason why it's reappeared on this list, just because it has been talked about by Damian Leone. And as they try to make Art a more solidified horror icon, I think it could be a really great breath of fresh air to have a brand new slasher come to the event. I'd be curious to see how it would really work. I think it could be something really risky, really bold for them if they were to take it. So as far as Terrifier goes on the likely meter, I'm going to say three out of five, a little higher than last year, just because of that Damian Leone conversation. But I'm not going to go so far as to say it's like locked in just because it is an outside property. It is something a little more risky for Halloween Horror Nights, but I would be very, very curious how they would
would do a terrifier house if they were to bring it to the event. The next one we're going to talk about is one near and dear to my heart. I've talked about it so many times that I really just hope it comes at some point, and I really hope it comes this year. I'm talking about Evil Dead. I would love for any of the Evil Dead films, really barring the 2013 remake because that already got a house, I would love any of the other films to get a house, whether it's any of the original three or Evil Dead Rise, which actually did get a house at Halloween Horror Nights Hollywood. I'm talking more for Orlando just because we haven't seen Evil Dead in Orlando. Lando in such a long time. I think it would be super popular as a sort of throwback cult classic house. I know they've done those in the past, things like Killer Clowns from Outer Space and Trick or Treat, this IP that is popular amongst horror fans, but still kind of exists in that sort of culty over the top realm. But even if they go with Evil Dead Rise, I would not be mad at it. From the POVs I did watch of Hollywood's house, it did look pretty fun for it being kind of cramped in the Walking Dead location. Um, If you did visit that house, please let me know what you thought of it in the comments below. This might just be my family boy status speaking but i would just love 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 to see evil dead at the event however because it is a third party ip because it is warner brothers and because we already saw it at hollywood i'm gonna put likely meter on this 2.5 out of 5 right in the middle this could really go either way and the last ip in the sort of previously talked about category is one that is celebrating a pretty prominent anniversary this year it's another warner brothers property unfortunately but it is gremlins i think this is one that a lot of people have really been wanting to appear here at Halloween Horror Nights. There's so much potential for this house in both Orlando and Hollywood. Puppets, animatronics, all kinds of really cool effects to bring this house to life. Really just because it's celebrating that 40th anniversary and it seems like one of those IPs that may seem impossible to get but might be a little closer than we think. I'm gonna put this on the list uh, and with a likely meter of 2.5 out of 5. Just like Evil Dead, it can really go either way. Now the final IP I want to talk about is one that I have not talked about before but i've been noticing all the little hints they've been dropping towards this ip so i just wanted to bring this up as a possibility of just throwing this out there in case it happens I want to talk about The Thing. It's been quite a while since we've seen The Thing at Halloween Horror Nights. It's not the first time it has appeared. The Thing Assimilation was a house back in 2007, and then they did the remake of The Thing um, in 2011, I believe. However, we've never seen a true adaptation of the 1982 John Carpenter classic that I think would make for a really great creature horror, uh, sort of body horror house. It is owned by Universal, so it is an in-house IP, and is one of those throwbacks, like I said, they haven't really done too much with. I'm putting the likely meter on this at a two just because i don't really think it's super concrete um but again i wanted to put it out there just in case it does happen now while ips bring us most of the same from last year i want to talk really about the originals Last year, I had a hard time placing any originals, but this year, I think there are some possibilities for originals because of stuff that last year left us with, or things that might have been talked about for previous years that we haven't really seen come to fruition yet. And the first one on that list is going to be an original take on Krampus. Now, of course, we've seen Krampus at the event before back in 2016 based on the Michael Doherty movie. However, we have never really seen an original take on Krampus, and I feel like Krampus gets more popular and sort of pop culture year after year. I'm seeing more about it outside of the horror circles. And I think that lore would be a really great basis for a super scary Halloween Horror Nights house. The original film was kind of like a dark comedy, but I would really like this to be a truly dark, horrific, spooky, scary take, almost like scary tales. Really my basis for this is because it was talked about last year, it was kind of rumored last year. And also I remember them doing the All Hallows Eve Krampus overlay where they really added their own spin to Krampus and really played with the iconography of it. So because of all that, because I think it would be a really great idea to add it, and because it was talked about last year, I'm gonna put Likely Meter for Krampus at four out of five. Now, next up, we have something that kind of jumps off of something that was actually brought to the event last year. Last year, with Dueling Dragons Choose Thy Fate, we saw a defunct Islands of Adventure original attraction come to life in a haunted house. So for this year, I'm proposing that we could see a Poseidon's Fury-based haunted house. For those who don't know, Poseidon's Fury was a very innovative walkthrough attraction that sort of tracked this battle between Poseidon and Darkanon. It closed last year, but this is a very beloved attraction, just like Dueling Dragons, to Universal fans. And they did have a Poseidon's Fury Easter egg in the Dueling Dragons podcast, sort of suggesting that they do exist in the same universe. Because of the success of Dueling Dragons, sort of bringing that environment to Halloween Horror Nights, I could see them leaning into that for Poseidon's Fury. And Islands of Adventure is celebrating its 25th anniversary 
anniversary this May. So I think it could be really great to lean into that nostalgia by bringing Poseidon's Fury to Halloween Horror Nights this year. But just because of the nature of it, I'm going to give this one a 3.5 out of 5 on the likely meter. I'm not putting it in the 4 category yet, but I do think there is a chance of this coming at some point. Maybe not this year, but I'm really hoping for it to come this year because, come on, you gotta celebrate IOA 25th anniversary. That's a big deal. Now, the next original here is the only direct sequel to a house that we've had in the past. And this house is very beloved by many, many Halloween Horror Nights fans. Many people consider it one of their favorite, if not their favorite haunted houses in recent years. I'm, of course, talking about a sequel to Slaughter Cinema. Now, they've had Slaughter Cinema sequels before. Yeti is a pretty notable example of a sequel to Slaughter Cinema. So maybe they take that approach and adapt one of the other films, maybe Devil Dogs or Shady's Kids or Midnight Snack 2. Maybe they adapt one of those films into their own haunted house. Or maybe they create a whole new set of movies and use the anthology style of Slaughter Cinema as a sequel. Universal loves to tease Slaughter Cinema in every fashion that they can, inserting it basically anywhere they can fit it. So I I think a sequel is closer than we expect, whether that's a spin-off or whether that's taking more of the form of Slaughter Cinema. So for that, I'm going to give it a four out of five on the likely meter. Um, just because it's been talked about, especially with Devil Dogs, I think it is very, very likely that this will be the next house to really get a big house sequel. Now, the final one isn't a specific house. It's not a specific house concept. It's not really a character. It's just that I think we are going to get for Halloween Horror Nights 33, a new icon. As we've seen with the Pumpkin Lord and most notably Dr. Oddfellow, it seems like Halloween Hornets in the years post HHN 30 want to incorporate some sort of icon character at the event. It could either be sort of like the Pumpkin Lord approach where it's just more of a thematic connection, or it could be something like Oddfellow where they really tie in the story and create this interconnected lore. Honestly, this can warrant its own video. Who could the next Halloween Horror Nights icon be? My money's on board. Schuster, I think he's a popular enough character with the fan base, and I think it could be a unique take on Halloween Hornets, especially how they treated him in the HHN Tribute Store, sort of creating this comic noir aesthetic, really leaning in to that iconography for that character. But even if it's not Boris, I do think next year we're really going to get some form of a new icon. Maybe it's a brand new character that we don't know about, just some sort of icon to continue the icon train as we lead into the next anniversary year. And if we get a new icon, I'm guessing we'd also be getting a new icon house, hence why it's on this list. But I do think a new icon at Halloween Horror Nights 33 is pretty likely, so I'm giving it a 4 out of 5 on the likely meter. And that is it. What I think could be coming to Halloween Horror Nights 33 when it comes to IPs and originals. Let me know in the comments, what did I miss for this year? Are there any big IPs that you're like, uh, buddy, you didn't even pay attention to this? Leave all your opinions as to what you think could be coming to Halloween Horror Nights 33 in the comments below. I would really love to sort of have a conversation about this and get the speculation rolling as we roll in to 2024. And if you're new here and you like this video, like sort of Halloween Horror Nights discussion, history, deep dives, things like that, be sure to let me know by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. You are all welcome here. I know this video has been long enough, so I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching, and I'll of course see you in the next one. Stay spooky, everybody.